Antonoff makes music with Taylor Swift and lives with Lena Dunham. Of course, the rock star is incredibly hardworking and ridiculously talented. His path to stardom, unconventional, to say the least. And he says it included struggles with anxiety and depression. Tonight, the award-winning singer-songwriter takes my Nightline co-anchor Dan Harris inside his world. He's the man behind the inescapable Sarah Bareilles song, Brave. He's also behind monster hits from the band Fun, for whom he plays guitar, and also co-wrote both Some Nights. And the Grammy award-winning song. On top of that, he's also written songs like Out of the Woods for the musical juggernaut hit machine, Taylor Swift. And now, Jack Antonoff is stepping out on his own with a new band called Bleachers and an insanely catchy song called directed by his girlfriend, Lena Dunham, of the HBO show Girls. His improbable rampage through the American Top 40 all began here. I made the entire Bleachers album in this room. In his childhood bedroom at his parents' house in suburban New Jersey, where he lived until a year and a half ago. Lived in this house until you were 28? Yeah. Um, which, which makes me think I had to be the only person who was in, like, a seemingly successful band. <laughs> Why were you living with your parents? I felt, and I, up until very recently, I felt ex totally uncompelled to move out. And were you really into your mom's cooking? No, it wasn't even that. I don't even really appreciate her cooking. <laughs> <laughs> you can chart his entire chronology through the clutter. Does that seem like, like a murderer lives here? Or is it like... <laughs> In his teens, Antonoff became obsessed with music. By the time he reached high school, where, and here's an interesting side note, he briefly dated a classmate named Scarlett Johansson, he was playing in bands. Every time I played a show, I'd write down the date, where it was, how much we got paid, when we played in the bill, and who else played. There's just, a lot of zeros here. Yeah. Zero, zero. There's a lot of zeros. And this is my old band Steel Train on the cover of the Jewish Standard. He struggled in relative obscurity for many years until he and two other guys started a band called Fun. They blew up, hit the top of the charts, won Grammys, and toured the world. Do, and you have gold records in here? Yeah, this is actually a platinum album, which is... That's pretty rare today. Very rare. It was during this Never heady time that Antonoff met two women who would change his life. The first was Lena Dunham. How did you two meet? My sister set us up on a blind date. Pretty quickly after that, it was like Serious Town? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, Serious Town. The other woman to enter his life while he was riding high with fun was Taylor Swift. They met while on the awards show circuit and decided to start writing music together. Lena Dunham posted this picture she took in their living room. Although Antonoff and Swift often work at a distance. So you guys aren't in a room together writing? You're actually just emailing back and forth? Usually. We, we've done the room thing, too. Um, and it kind of either way works, but there's something nice about like me working really hard on a track and trying to put this whole idea together, then sending it to her, and she hears it with totally different ears. But this is not a man content to be known as either Arm Candy or somebody else's songwriter. When he was out on the road with fun, he started writing new songs for a new band called Bleachers. So you would wake up in some random city somewhere, and instead of hanging out with the rest of the band, you would hole up and, and write songs? I just work a lot. I remember recording and writing a lot of I Want to Get Better in a hotel room in Malaysia. Malaysia? Yeah. I'd work on planes, I'd work on the bus. The first single, I Want to Get Better, was a hit. The video his girlfriend directed shows Antonoff as a shrink, but he will be the first to tell you he has spent a lot of time on the other side of the couch. It's all about loss and anxiety. His own loss and anxiety, to be specific. When he was 18, in rapid succession, 9-11 happened, his sister died of cancer, and his cousin died while fighting in Iraq. My whole world just like felt very um, closed and very much like anything horrible was possible. You know, anytime you get on a plane, you think it's gonna crash. Anytime you're in a car, you think it's gonna crash. You think everyone you know is gonna die. And to this day, of like very intense anxiety and depression. Those fears have not stopped him from leading a very public life. We joined him on the road with Bleachers at a sold-out show in Boston. 
Antonoff, most of the last 15 years has been spent on the road. And he admits this takes a toll on his relationship. When we went backstage, Antonoff tried to explain why he can't stop. Touring's hard. I don't not understand when people walk away. It's not for me. At this point, after 15 years, it's just a huge part of my life. Like, for better or worse, I just have to be on tour for some portion of the year. But it's not easy on the people you love. And I understand when people look at this life and think this isn't sustainable. Back at home, he invited us into his new studio, a sort of private lab where he concocts his hits. It's kind of all about just like finding cool sounds. It's got a mad scientist feel to it. That's cool. Like, I feel like seeing where it fits, like. And right in front of our eyes, he went into a zone and started making a new song seemingly out of thin air. Oh my God, this is probably gonna sound awesome in there. It's pretty cool. So are we potentially witnessing the, the germs of your next big song? Yeah, because this is actually ending up way cooler than, than if I usually just try to do something in front of someone. Even let a middle-aged reporter throw in a few suggestions. Can I get a songwriter credit on this? Yeah, definitely. When you talk about I don't want to want you, I start thinking about addiction. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm rarely writing about a girl. <laughs> like, uh, that is nice. Now you're really lobbying for some publishing here. So are you feeling a genuine sort of like, I'm onto something buzz right now? Yeah, this is a cool song. Jungle of Desire. I'll pay you if that, if that works out. <laughs> I have to say, it is so impressive. 30 minutes ago, you had a laugh, and now you have a song. That's what's cool about this stuff is like, that track could end up being a Bleacher song. I could show it to someone else and they could love it. Whether or not this song ever sees the light of day, it is a reasonably safe bet that the hits will keep coming and they will likely continue to be both intensely catchy and personal. As Antonoff likes to say, pop music is at its most brilliant when it makes you both dance and cry. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York.